Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful trout, man. Woo! Pretty fish. Look at that. Big old head shakes. We'll go ahead and get him in the boat. Hey, what's going on, Salt Star Nation? Good morning. Welcome back. I'm out here again today, just a little bit south of Savannah in Georgia here, and I am wanting to get on some fish. So we today, guys, have some really good weather starting out in the morning. Then we're going to have some variable northeast winds, which if you guys know around here in Savannah, those northeast winds can be pretty brutal. So starting out, I'm going to be fishing just some bigger water, uh, some bigger areas where I can go in and hopefully try and find some bait, some areas where bait's getting pushed up in the grass. We're starting at a high tide so i'm gonna be fishing up real close and shallow to flooded structure and grass and that's going to be what i'm starting out with guys and then once that tide starts to drop and i have to push off of those flats i'm probably going to try and push back to some creeks and again try to get a little bit protected from some of that wind but anyway guys it should be a fun one should be a pretty good day overall the sun just popped up so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting after it but i'll see you once we catch a few fish there we go that was the fish we we're looking for guys first one in the morning right here doesn't seem like he's too big but we're gonna count it looks like a little trout right off the point so usually i use shrimp over here guys but i decided to switch up to the mulligan i saw some uh mullet right here in the grass just kind of jumping so i decided to go ahead and switch to the paddle tail and look at this guy he absolutely ate it let's go ahead and get him in all right guys beautiful little trout right here the first one in the morning let's go ahead and see if we can get a few more of these guys there we go guys that was such a soft bite crazy crazy soft bite another small trout here but starting to find them guys i went ahead and made a long pass and i always start further out from the grass because you never quite know where these fish are nice little trout um, but what I ended up doing is going ahead and pushing back in some of these coves in probably about three, four feet of water. And these fish, I think, are pushed up way in the grass. So went ahead, fished out a little bit further to see if they were deeper, weren't there. So went ahead now and I'm starting to fish a lot closer to the grass and a lot closer to the structure. And I ended up with another nice trout here. So let's see if this is a trend. We'll keep catching some more. There it is. That's the fish we're looking for, guys. A little bit better here, finally all right yeah it might just taking a little bit of that water moving out and starting to move because i was kind of here around slack tide but this is a little better fish here he's trying to go around the back of the boat see if we can get him up all right there we go guys beautiful trout right there nice keeper right there on the new mulligan but guys uh, just went ahead and started going back. You know, I went ahead and made a nice long pass, only caught a few, caught a few way back up in the shallows there. And it definitely seemed like the fish were up more shallow. Uh, this fish here is pretty cold. So really slow bite today. Um, hopefully this moving water and since this sun came out, it's going to start warming up a little bit and these fish will get fired up. But let's go ahead and try this spot a little bit longer before we make a move and see if we can catch a few more hey all right guys so went ahead and fished out that first spot really really stuck with it and fished it pretty hard uh, i'm pretty confident that there's just not really a school there i definitely picked off whatever stragglers were in there ended up catching a few nice trout uh, but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and try and make a move before all this wind gets really bad out here in the bigger water uh, and try to fish some areas that might be a little bit more protected from that kind of north northeast wind um, but then after that guys I might go and try and fish some creeks but wasn't quite what i was expecting i was hoping there'd be a little little bit more fish out here but you know hadn't been out you know in the sound in these areas for a while we've had a lot of really strong winds but today was pretty nice and i wanted to go ahead and try and take advantage of it this morning uh and now i know you know that's fishing so anyway it's gonna go ahead and try to go to another spot uh and fish there a little bit before i get locked in uh then we're gonna go and start you know fishing some creeks guys but anyway uh learned a lot today on this one shrimp definitely was not the ticket uh which is good that's kind of the trend i've been seeing lately so we're gonna continue to fish with the pack paddle tail uh, and more of fin fish presentations today. But anyway, guys, before I get late, I'm gonna go ahead and go to this next spot and I'll see you there. There we go, finally got one, guys. All right, so it's ended up riding a bank here. It's got a trout, just got a nibble right back behind me as well. So hopefully some of these trout are on some of this flooded, yep, pretty trout, some of these flooded oyster bars and stuff along here. Let's get him in real quick. 
all we're doing now is I ended up moving a lot of people are in the spots out in the sound so I kind of moved to some halfway points that are going into big entrances to big water way way back so these big points and stuff like that guys are really where uh, a good transition area is for these fish because there a lot of them are still out in your sounds and a lot are still back in your creeks so I'm kind of splitting the difference right now and just seeing these sunlit banks and all these areas that have oysters on them and I'm ended up catching a nice little trout there we go got them on that one guys yeah these fish are super cold uh really really soft bites and i'm really having to entice them out of here and really what i'm having to do guys i'll tell you once i get this fish in but basically i'm just going and there's a point and some submerged structure and right at that drop off is where these fish are kind of hanging out another pretty little schoolie right here legal trout but guys it's really really tough today these fish are cold all the ones that i'm touching are just really really cold so i'm using a very light jig head a 1 8 ounce and a paddle tail letting it flutter down get into that strike zone then a couple bumps to entice them so i'll show you on this next clip just how i retrieve this to make sure these fish are going to eat it but really really tough finicky bite sometimes that's what you got to do let's go ahead and get this guy in all right guys so I want to go ahead and go over the real retrieve that I use for this type of scenario really cold weather right now about 59 degrees is our water temp so what I'm doing as you can see I've got a paddle tail on here and I've got a lighter jig head this is only a 1 8 ounce trout eye jig head just got it on a paddle tail this is our new mulligan but what I'm doing guys I'll throw it out there and then you'll watch I'm just gonna let it sink I'm gonna let it get to depth and then once it's at depth I'm gonna do what's called a slow roll and I'm gonna keep this low in the water column so all I'm gonna do is a very slow roll I'll show you in a second and then every once in a while I give it a couple bumps so I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you went ahead and throw it out all right it's about where I want it and I'm just gonna let it sink two three four feet all right now after a few seconds it's to depth hopefully you can see my reel here guys this is all I'm doing this slow right there just gave it a little pop same thing just nice and easy just like that very very easy easy retrieve and that's all you're doing guys you're trying to entice these fish that are a little bit further from the bank they're not really wanting to eat too much so that's all you got to do give it a little bit of action every once in a while and a lot of times they'll hit it because it's an easy meal and an easy prey item for them and they want to eat it because it's right in front of their face but if you're just zinging this thing or right past them a lot of times they're just not going to go after it you really have to entice them and doing the slow roll technique like this letting your lure get to depth is a really good way oh, see right there oh, i missed him because i was talking to you guys but he hit it right there and look how far out from the bank i am i was really having to entice that fish and we're in pretty deep water right here but I'm a good, you know, 30, 40 feet from the bank right now. And that fish hit it. He was probably following it because it looked like it was injured or something wrong with it. And then he hit it right here by the boat. So a lot of times, guys, just go ahead, throw it out there, get the depth, do that exact same technique that I just showed you, and you'll get a lot more bites. Hey, what's going on, guys? So real quick, I did want to give you another tip, and this is just going to be going over some cold weather fishing once that water temperature really drops, like what we've had in the 50s and even lower 60s sometimes. But positioning is very important. So typically what you'll start to see me do, guys, is run a bank line, right? So I'll start kind of this way and go this way. And what I'll do is I'll actually make two passes. One pass will be a little bit further out from the bank that I can't quite reach the grass because a lot of times there's submerged structure there's a lot of things that you don't know about especially if it's a new area like you're fishing um, or well what i'm fishing today and you want to make sure that you're not spooking those fish because a lot of times in this colder weather guys they do actually hang a little bit deeper so you want to make sure that you're further out from the bank and then as you go ahead and make that first pass you can go ahead and make another pass that's totally fine and see where those fish are hanging out uh, in that area for the day but just as you can see right here here's my boat you can see right here and then i'm a good you know two to two and a half cast lengths away and i just started catching fish and the reason why is i know i could feel it with my lure on the bottom there's some submerged oyster banks or some bars down there and those fish are hanging out a little bit deeper so what i'm doing is throwing my paddle tail lure out there about halfway between me and the bank letting it fall get to depth in that strike zone then bumping it back and catching some fish but it's a really tough bite today and sometimes guys you got to adapt 
trapped and you got to figure out where those fish are where they're wanting to be and where they're wanting to feed because sometimes they do not want to go all the way up to the bank in the grass sometimes they like hanging a little bit deeper because it's more comfortable for them out there but anyway just wanted to share that tip with you guys because it's a really really important thing to do uh, and it doesn't mean there aren't fish in this area sometimes they might just be a little bit further from the bank there he is got him on that one guys okay <laughs> So they're hitting it on the drop. This is a nice fish here. So same thing, I'm staying way out here from the bank, not trying to spook these fish or get close to them. You can see right here on the trolling motor and got a nice keeper trout right here. All right, there we go guys. Beautiful trout right there. He is cold. He's still chewing on that mulligan, but yeah, cold, cold fish guys. So I'm fishing way out from the bank and they're nailing it on the drop. So really light jig head, paddle tail your choice. I really like the slam shady color this time of year. Uh, it's been doing really well, but these trout are starting to get fired up because I'm dancing this just right in front of their face and it's hard for them to refuse, but really pretty, pretty speckled trout right here. There we go, light clockwork guys. Finally found the trend and now we are on some fish. Really difficult, really difficult day guys. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's been tough, but uh, we found the trend, this is a little one, but we're on some fish. So all we're doing is coming out here, we're finding these big kind of points, areas, transition zones, and the north side of the bank, you can see all the sun is coming down right here, guys. It's all going to this bank. So those fish are all pushing up on this flooded structure. They're wanting to go around these oysters because once that gets hit, it's gonna warm that water up and it's starting to fire them up. The sun has been up for about two or three hours and it's warming the water up and their metabolism is getting fired up. But this technique with the paddle tail, guys, I'm telling you is absolute money. You're gonna catch a lot more fish that way but really really do exactly what I'm saying and slow it down and they'll hit it on that drop and you'll be good to go and get a bunch more like this so they're hitting the tail on it they're getting a little bit more aggressive though which is great they're definitely starting to hit it a little bit harder this water warming up for them is really getting them fired up there we go right over that structure guys see how far out of the bank that he was though so if you start out real close to the bank, you're gonna spook all these fish that I'm catching really right here. Almost I'm too close at this point. So definitely make sure, see how fired up once the sun came out that guy is, but back off a little bit, throw, let your lure sink down in that strike zone, then approach a little bit closer. Whew. All right, a lot better fish right here, guys. Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful trout, man. Woo, pretty fish, look at that. Big old head shakes. We'll go ahead and get him in the boat. All right, guys, how is that for a pretty Georgia trout? That's about an 18 inch fish right there. Definitely some quality. Fish are getting bigger, but same thing, super cold. Uh, but guys, same exact thing, throwing over flooded structure on the north lit bank line. These fish are definitely holding, but I'm a really, really far from the bank. I can't quite cast all the way to the grass, and these fish are hanging out just on the edge right here before the grass around that structure. So definitely, definitely make sure you're doing that, and you catch a bunch of pretty, pretty trout just like this one. Yep. Okay, got him. <laughs> all right, on the 2.0, look at that guy. Woo! But again, guys, they're pretty far from the bank. You see how far that guy is from the bank compared to where I'm at. He is every bit of halfway, so just keep that in mind. Yep, just as I thought, guys. That is so funny. <laughs> Man, so backside of this island, what's happening is bait's getting trapped and pushed and converged right here to the backside. My second cast, I was able to get a nice flatty. Look at that. We might get a slam today, guys. Better go get a redfish next. Look at that beautiful, beautiful flounder right there. All right, man. These guys are ultimate ambush predators, y'all. And man, he was right there just on the backside where all this current's wrapping around to this point right here. So I was hoping to get some trout, but just putting this right above the bottom, he nailed it. So pretty awesome. Nice little flounder. All right, guys. So that's gonna be it today, heading back to the ramp, but man, what a kind of crazy day had to really make some big adjustments to find some fish but man once we did we really got on them i could have stayed at that spot and caught my limit plus some um and so it was a really really good time uh just going and figuring out the trend guys and sometimes that's just what you got to do you know i wasn't quite sure uh where those fish were going to be today so i went out there caught a few here and there and then eventually ended up making a big move and a big change and it paid off and sometimes you just got to do that if i would have just kind of stuck with it and tried to keep 
keep fishing that same type of area I was this morning, probably wouldn't have done as good as I did today and wouldn't have caught a lemon of trout. So anyway, really good time guys. The winner for the day was going to be the Slam Shady color, both in the 2.0 and the Mulligan. Um, but again, guys, that light jig head, that trout out of the 1 8 ounce really did the trick because the heavier jig heads, a lot of times when these fish get really cold, it really slows down the bite when you have a heavy jig head that's moving really, really fast through the water. So you want to make sure you've got one that's a little bit lighter and it's a slow fall and that really helps the bite um, that's what got all my bites today guys was that lighter jig head so definitely make sure you're doing that also make sure you know when you're starting out and you're working a bank line start a little bit further back than you normally would a lot of times during this part of the year those fish are a little bit further out they're on submerged structure away from the bank and some deeper water so keep that in mind as well but anyway guys if you got any questions definitely let me know but this was a fun one really glad to get out here and figure out the trend today before all these winds kicked up but we got some weather coming in now and i'm going to go ahead and head in but anyway just let me know if you got any questions and i'll see you guys back out on the next one